here the word of the Lord is here for you again and is a powerful message for you and I want you to pay attention as the word of the Lord comes through his servant this hour God bless you and subscribe to it to the book of Esther this is where my teaching will come from we're going to be exploring the book of Esther for many years the book of Esther has been for me a very very interesting book because in this book we do not find the record of a man of God and a priest which is very strange because the character of scripture is such that regardless of the dispensation you would usually find someone who would represent the voice and the hand of God within the context of that dispensation but Esther is very strange the Bible starts by flaunting the glory of a very strange king called Ahasuerus. Please follow me. The Bible is not cheerful to show us the length and the breadth of this man's achievement, the extent of his greatness. That he was a king that exerted dominion over 127 provinces. A single man. I wonder why the Bible would take out the time and the rigor to be that detailed. It was fine enough to say there was once a great king and this man was head of 127 provinces. That's enough. But the Bible goes on to give us meticulously. The Bible talks about his princes and all the people that represented his cabinet. Amen. Then the scene changes. The Bible introduces a very strange woman who the Bible admits to be very beautiful called Vashti. Please follow me. The Bible is talking to us about a woman who at that time was his bride called Queen Vashti. And the Bible lets us know that she was a woman who was fair to look upon. I'm just taking the narrative so that we save time. And then at a point it was, in those days it was very consistent in the character of kings to organize banquets and invite neighboring princes or neighboring kings and to show their glory in their presence. They would show them the spoils of war. They would show them the treasures of the palace. They would call the orators to come and, you know, just captivate the people with their skill and all of that. And on this one occasion, the king called for a banquet. And then, while the men were under the influence of the wine and the bounty of the palace, on the other side of the palace was Vashti, having her own thing. She had her own cabinet too. And please follow this narrative because there are two things I'll be discussing, one today and then the other tomorrow. The next major issue the Bible discusses is the dishonor that a woman communicates to the king and the consequence that follows. The king calls for Vashti to come and all he wanted to do with her, can you imagine that? Was for her to just turn around and go around and tell the king to take a good look at this woman who is called my wife. And the moment Vashti heard that, she felt insulted and she believed she was being used and she rebelled. She sent a reply, go and tell the king, Vashti will not come. Are we together? The king is grieved, but decides to stay calm. Very good man. And then the elders come together and advise the king and say, Mr. Man, we're informed. He looks like he wants to be passing about this issue. This woman just showed dishonor and she's in a position where anything she does is regarded worthy of emulation. The, the effect of this that she has done is that what we get to do likewise. Are we together? So it says, do something that will be a warning. Preserve the honor of the women in your province by you are more interested in the continuity of your province than your personal agenda. The king says, okay, that's all right. And the king was Please listen. The book of Esther is very interesting. Because the moment Vashti is banished, then the story takes another switch. That there is a man.
woman who sat at the gate called Mordecai. Am I boring you? And then Mordecai took a lady in his custody, a village girl, to be very, very modest. And the Bible says that she had no father, no mother. Please follow me. And there is an announcement from the palace. Gather all the virgins in Shushan. The king is about to look for another wife. And Mordecai summons the courage to bring his little girl. Go and take a look. Paradventure the king may like you. Are we together now? And the rest is history. Eventually, she becomes queen. And then, being queen, she now becomes very strange. The only book in the Bible where the official voice of God and the advancer of God's interest was not a priest, not a prophet, not a mighty man warrior, but a woman. A woman. It was because of that woman that the Jews were killed. It was because of that woman that Mother Kai was preserved. A woman who did not use a knife and yet judge her man. A woman who did not use a knife and yet restored peace to me. There is something powerful you will learn. The reason why God allowed a woman to be the real actor. The first wonder in the book of Esther was the transition of to become the wife of kings in those days were arrogant. They will not only say go, they will say you are not beautiful. They were, they were like gods. So what did Esther do, precious people of God, that would transit this little village girl who would dare not stand close to the king's palace, but now had gotten favor with the king, not only to become his queen, but she was willing to divide her kingdom without divorce. Divide the kingdom without divorce. Let's call on the pastor. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Esther chapter 4. I'll begin to read from verse 13. And then I'll just share the principle and the prayer. I hope you are not going to be tired of praying in this conference. I believe in prayer. Please read verse 13 with me if it's projected, if you can see it and you are a Christian. One, two, read. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther. Uh -huh. Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. Verse 14. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this, stop, 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 don't rush. If you hold your peace, when? And that means this season requires a response, Esther. If you respond another time, it will not produce the same effect. There is a time, Esther, and God is demand on a response. The letter and the threat of Haman. I hope you understand the vendetta between Haman and the That Mordecai would not bow as a Jew. And Haman said, no, I need absolute loyalty. This man is a threat to the position, my exalted position. And not only Mordecai, he wanted to annihilate every Jew. Are we together? And Mordecai now sent word to Esther, and Esther wanted to the mistake of Vashti. Because let me confess, the palace can disconnect you with the pain of where you came from. To the point that you may not remember that once upon a time you were in a position that now exalted God desires that you go back. The palace can so fade the scars of your pain. 
you will forget you were once at the backside. And so Esther was saying, look, this is not an issue of urgency. I'm queen, leave me. And Mordecai said, go and tell her, don't you forget that you are also a Jew. They may start with us, but they will not end with us. Are we together now? Verse 14. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace, when? At this time. I told you about times and seasons. That every time and every season requires a response. And then it says, there, Then there shall be enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. Now here's the point. Please, every woman of God here, read with me the last, um, what now? The clause, one to go. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Please see. God bless you. Who knoweth whether thou has come to this kingdom? Vashti is banished and there is a vacancy and you know God is totally not interested in anything that he cannot find a window for me to advance his kingdom. Please listen, when you study the Bible, historically, many other things happen concurrently with the things written in the Bible that were worthy of being recorded. Some of them were recorded but they were never captured in scripture. Everything captured in scripture were captured with respect to their contribution to kingdom and life. If God could not find a space in that story where Christ will be revealed, it was useless. In God's economy, whatever promotes Christ is what is interesting. It doesn't matter how popular, if Christ cannot find a space for himself in any story, in any life, in any situation, it is not worth his participation. For a long time, the issue of the palace was not a concern to God because everybody here did not give him space. God began to be interested in the palace when there was vacancy because his desire was to find a way to bring the Jews out of captivity. There were people who had hopped from one level of captivity to the other. Notice that the name God was never mentioned until Esther showed up. There was nothing in that palace that seemed to honor God. And so God too was here and silent. But the moment he saw the vacancy, he started saying, now my interest can be promoted. And then a little girl gets to the palace and God says, finally, I've gotten someone who can represent my purposes. And through that one woman, not a prophet, not a king, not a priest. The only book, like I said, where a woman played the role of both the prophetic, the apostolic, without no ordination from anyone, she became the voice of God within that time. There are two keys that we will learn from the entire book of Esther. I studied very carefully the spiritual tools that Esther used both for her exaltation and the preservation of God's people. And surprisingly, I thought I would find so many things. I was shocked to find only two. And this is what we are going to be discussing. And that whoever will align to possess this keys in this season will inevitably reproduce Esther's dimension of results. Uniqueness and a man's usefulness. The rewarding, the discerning of a man's usefulness. The usefulness of a person could be an object is called honor. Easy to discern. This is a form. The ability to discern the usefulness of this form and the ability to not take it for granted. I cannot act like my life with my phone and my life outside my phone is possible. That is honor. 
I must acknowledge the role and the key that this gadget, as small as it is, contributes to the improvement of my life. It can help my efficiency. Is that true? Now listen to this. This honor, therefore, is the trivializing of a man's usefulness. This honor is the trivializing of the contribution of a person or an object in your life. I show you what many people continue to say. This is one of the most powerful spiritual mysteries that the Lord taught me outside of the law of encounter. I thank God for the privilege and the access He's granted His me to you. The revelatory dimension of God, I submit to you that if you master all, there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to clamp you down in life. You will live your life as if you can't do something. God, please I show you why great people do not necessarily rise to the position that befits their sacrifice. They have knowledge, they have skill, they even have God, but they have trivialized the excellency. Honor is not a ladder, it's a lift. It can turn your life around in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Please listen to me. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter, but who likes you matters. Please away with that theology that it doesn't matter. Um, I, I don't need men. If you are saying that with respect to God's sovereign power, you are right. But if you are saying that with respect to trivializing the usefulness of men, sit back, relax, and experience the shock that your ignorance will produce. The episodes of pain that will come as a result of ignorance. To the point that the psalmist says, what is man? Lord, you have options. There are too many things to think about in the throne. But in the midst of the worship, he thinks of man. To the point that he's not ashamed to change man. He's, he, 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 he's unashamed to make his vulnerability. I mean, he shows us how vulnerable and soft-spotted he is. How dare you kill your life, man? What is man? Nor the son of man that thou visited you. Please learn this and learn it forever. All blessings come from God through men to you. No blessing comes from God to you. It looks like it came from God to you. Even Jesus came from God through men to men. All destructions come from Satan through men to men. And all blessings with no exception whatsoever. If it looked like you had an encounter with God, interfacing you and God was an intercessor somewhere just because you could not see the person. Anna the prophetess was in the temple for 60 years praying down Jesus. It was not just Mary and Angel Gabriel, there was a man in it. Please learn this. I want you to leave this conference with something you know that you can activate right here and now and it can turn your life around. Are we together? All blessings come from God to men to men. It is possible for God to say yes and a man says no. The answer in your life will be no. <laughs> Believers, please listen. Please listen. David is in the wilderness seeing visions of himself being king. God rejects Saul as king. A man comes in between God Samuel and says, Lord, I refuse. And David is paying the price. God already had told him, Mr. Man, you are next king. A prophet stands in between and says, God, I have not allowed you. And David's destiny is in the balance, waiting for the approval of not God, a man. And God himself, knowing the immutability of the systems he built, 
had to come to the man to negotiate. He said, look, Samuel, let's not drag it. How long shall you wait? Seeing that I've rejected Saul as king, don't delay. Listen, listen. Don't delay another man's destiny. Pick up your horn. Go to the house of Jesse. Couldn't God bypass Samuel? What was the big deal in Samuel? Says an ignorant Christian. Was it not because they met Samuel that the donkey returned back home? Restoration is true. My question is under what condition? Every possibility in the kingdom is governed by spiritual conditions that make them real in your life. Just because they are true based on God's virgin does not mean they will manifest. Is God helping us this morning? Praise the Lord. Oh, I will. I will. The goal is knowledge. Please listen very carefully. I'm showing you and I hope for some of you I'm changing your perspective that your answer the answer to the many prayers continues to move around you and is within your circumstances. It is the intelligence to understand how to attract that answer to you that the missing link is not your prayer. Maybe the missing link may not even be ungodliness. That there is a spiritual weapon that can transit men from where the backside right to the throne. I know you know favor, but leave favor to no you. The mother that gives birth to favor is called honor. Until honor is pregnant, there is no child called favor. If honor is buried, you are in trouble. You will never, never. Your first assignment is to pray that honor can take him. When honor takes him, begin to rejoice. Because a child is coming and the name of that child is I cannot know you by myself unless you take over. We cannot see this on our own. Jesus, take over. We cannot learn this by ourselves unless you take over. Listen, please sit down. Let me tell you this. There are many families here that have the privilege of leverage from the credibility and the integrity of their parents. And may God bless you, my mind. But I'm sure, without contradiction, that there are a few of us here that the only ladder you will have in your life is the ladder that is built through this understanding. Otherwise, you will remain at the backside of Shushan forever. Please hear me. Your growth and your lifting is not just dependent on the will of God. His will for you is clear. It's not a mystery. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. 29 and verse 11, Jeremiah. Say the Lord. They are thoughts of good, peace, and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. Are we together? It is not, it is not, we are not in the dark as to God's desire for us to rise to the top. Because he said in John 16 and verse 8, he says, Herein is my Father glorified. Let me show you how the Father takes glory. He says, When you bear much fruit, so then shall ye be my disciples. Let me interpret that for you. It means in your bearing much fruit, you validate that I mentored you well. You're not bearing fruit is an indictment on my mentorship process. Let it not be that I did not show you the systems of the kingdom. So when you produce results, Jesus comes to a tree and finds that tree with green leaves and then no fruit and he curses the tree. He doesn't ask Satan, help me and curse this tree by himself. The same anointing you want was used to curse the tree and in 24 hours the tree went down. Notice how sad he saw fruitlessness. It's got to someone to Honor is the reason why you will live where you are to the next level 
or is the reason why you may remain where you are in spite of the fasting, in spite of the prayer. I came from a background that did not provide an advantage by default. And I knew that if I didn't learn this, I would continue to propose things I would never see in my life. It is painful to propose things that your life cannot capture. There is no ladder. There is no dimension. The next time you are writing streams of income, write on. When you write real estate, write on. You can earn it. Practicing on. Please understand what I'm saying. This is very powerful. Very powerful. Especially, let me say this respectfully, a generation of young people. We don't understand honor at all. Is the reason why we life continues to be hard because transgression is a mother when she gives birth. The name of her child is hardship. Hardship has a science to it. Proverbs 13 and verse 15. The Bible says, Good understanding procureth favor. It says, But the way of transgression is hard. A transgressor is not an unbeliever. A transgressor is a violator of God's system. I came truly to charge our hearts so that we will have results that bring glory to the name of the Lord. There are many skillful people in this land, in this city, around this nation, and they continue to wonder why they never rise. Some music ministers, some men of God, some women of God, some career people. Please listen very carefully. People continue to have visions and visions of growth in ministry and they wonder why, in spite of all the machineries that they put in place, they add every other thing to the ingredient except honor. What everything in the palace minus honor produced. The king is still on his throne. His servants still loyal to him. The chariot still in place. The treasure house still full of gold. And honor is extracted from a palace for one day and the palace is almost in trouble. Think what has been happening in your life. Everything minus honor. Degree minus honor. Prayer minus honor. Is God speaking to us? Honor is the deciding, the celebrating, and if need be, the rewarding of a person, of a system. Let me submit to you that the only reason why we have failed in life is not so much about Satan, it is dishonor. Dishonor to God, dishonor to men, dishonor to principles. Dishonor to God, dishonor to men, dishonor to principles. Take Satan out of this world, men will continue suffering. They will not even know he has left. That's when you will know what part of our lives have nothing to do with him. Dishonor to God, dishonor to men, dishonor to principles. In heaven where the devil is not, angels don't just enter the throne room. Satan is not there. Evil is not there. Yet you don't jump in and out of the throne room. There are doors. There is order. In heaven. Hallelujah. When you trivialize the usefulness of God in your life, please listen. When, you tr when God becomes like one of the many important things, you just classify him as number 13 in the list. So you are in my heart, oh God. The jealousy of God was designed to fight everything till he's number one. Even if he gave it to you. It's amazing that God can fight something he once gave you. Read the Bible and see God giving people thrones and fighting it again. The moment he cannot find his place, exalted. The moment you add many things to God and say, Lord, you are important, but not the only important thing. This dishonor has translated to marriage. You are my wife, what is there? Are we not married? What part of the ring can't you see? You see that? 
When we see great people, we so trivialize them. What is it about this artist? Is it just because God did the best a good word? What is there? If I train my little voice, won't I be there? You see, that attitude alone, you don't know you are programming a climate of hardship. Let me tell you why many Nigerians continue to go through pain. We are embarrassed to acknowledge great things. When we see greatness, we act as if we are blind towards it. Someone can come into this beautiful church right now and see our mothers and our sisters and say, so what is what is so special about the conference? What is in I started organizing conferences since I was small. That's why you are where you are. You, you see this kind of attitude. Please learn this. There are many young arrogant preachers that would enter and see men of God, people seasoned people who have been used by God, and just look and wonder, okay, so what is he saying? Let me see if I can get one or two things. I hear they say he's a nice man of God. You, you see, let me tell you this, my brothers and my sisters. There are battles you cannot fight. The fact that you want to fight it is proof that your life is under an attack. Because there are battles in this life that you should never try to fight. Are we together? I preached a message seven years ago that became a blessing to the body of Christ and I'm honored to be to have been used by God. It's called commanding results. It was a vision. Please listen. It was a vision that I had, a revelation as to why people's lives never move. And I said, Lord, there has to be a way. Should I fail simply because of my background? Was it my fault? You are born looking like your parents, but you die looking like your knowledge and decisions. It's true. It's true. Someone has to be tired this morning. He said, No, it can't be like this. Someone you have dishonored, something you have dishonored has authorized your hardship. Listen to me very carefully. A mother with eight children and all of them responsible children and you say she's just lucky. Let her leave the children to go abroad and see. You see that dishonor? You have one child, you are almost having baby, and a woman has eight children, and as a widow took care of them. Every time you see consistent results, it's no longer guesswork, there is a grace. You cannot be exceptional indefinitely by your strength. It's proof that another system has lifted you. And any wise person will discern that behind these results, there is a grace. I can tell you the key to close doors is honor. You don't need to ask the door to close. Just practice this honor and watch the door shut on their own. Every door that opens, opens to honor. Every door that is shut. The door of the palace, in spite of the chains, she did not have a key, but honor took her to the palace. She bypassed the protocol. Let, let her dasa, had she tried to access the king on her own, even Mordecai could not cross the gate. But a villager's honor takes her right to the palace. Someone is rising. In the name of Jesus. That means the lack of job was not really about the job. It was something about your dishonor. When you trivialize a man's usefulness in your life, then you are brought into a system where you are forced to recognize that men can be very useful in the rising of men. Praise the Lord. I've had the privilege to meet very good people and I've made it as a culture, as a person to never trivialize greatness when I see it. It takes a lot of humility. Honor many times will sting your ego. 
for the list and the dimension it will take me towards that Christ. Please listen to me. Listen to me. The first key we see in the book of Christ that was responsible for this effortless transition. In fact, the first key that we see, notice that Vashti did not just backslide down from the palace. She left immediately. Look how dangerous this honor is. The king never, if, if, it's very clear from scripture that Vashti was not a woman of honor because there's no record of her running to the king to say, oh king, have mercy upon me. King to hell with you. What is there about your palace? It's all like, let me remind you that once upon a time, you were not in the palace. In the name of Jesus Christ, I forbid it for Enter the palace and have to come out because of this honor. My Bible says to me, the path of the just is as a shining light. The Bible says it shines ever brighter. I've seen this with men of God. You are here today in this life. Have you seen names and seen people that seem to capture your attention? Then it's seems you know, Sometimes it could be a music artist. Everybody is placing a demand on your grace until you forgot that the favor and the honor of the people is a trust you should not realize. And suddenly, everything goes down. Whatever you can do in your life to make honor. I know people who would have been managing directors to deal without battles. Every qualification, prophecy had come. This honor shut that door and threw the padlock. Threw the key. Train your spirit, man. When Jesus was born, he was taken to the temple to honor the people that spiritually contributed to his arrival. Please listen. Take him to the temple. Simeon the prophet lifts him, blesses him. Anna the prophetess blesses him. And then he starts to leave. Now watch this. Until Jesus came to the sea, the official voice of God within that territory was John the prophet. I hope you know that. Who we call the Baptist. Baptism was a strategy to identify the Christ. Look at the rigor he went through to be trained to be able to see Jesus. Now John sees Jesus coming. And then he says, Behold the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. And John said, I know you are the Christ. And you know, Jesus, you know, their conversation. And he says that um, I am not even worthy to untie the latches of your shoe. Jesus would have said, I, I thought you don't know. Jesus, let me tell you this. Listen, listen. Please listen. Jesus, the word, was under a closed heaven for 30 years till honor opened his heavens. Jesus, your Jesus, as the Son of God, his heavens were closed. Not even the Father opened it. He came to the existing authority within that land. And Jesus said, so far it to be so. In other words, this is an ordinance that not even me can violate. Please listen. This is powerful. It's a law. It's not a suggestion. It's not an opinion. It's a law. I jumped here by mistake. Gravity will not say, okay, I know you are preaching. You are just carried away. I'm falling straight up. And then John dips Jesus in water and the father is watching. When Jesus comes out, then the Bible says, and the heavens. Over who? Say that have a crowd. He would have tried it and be surprised. He would have tried to call people. He would have tried to collect a man's donkey. And see what the Roman people would have done for him. You lose someone's donkey. And say the master has need of it. Who else is the master if not Caesar? But when your heavens are open. There are things that others can do and fail. And you can do and pass with it. Please listen. Don't just be excited for nothing. I want you to get this. It's a principle. We are going to pray something. But you have to get it. Honor opens his hands. 
The father now says, This is my beloved son. What was he before? That the father is saying, This now, having fulfilled this ordinance, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. And then he says, Hear. Business woman who has announced that Lagos should hear you. Just because you have a good guarantee, you will be heard. Just because you have a voice that sings does not guarantee you will be heard. Please listen to me. Just because you have an anointing, genuine anointing, it doesn't mean you will be heard. That verdict. Yeah. Hear ye, her sons. Hear ye, his sons. Come to his church. 